Dr. Handel, sometimes kids which have tall fathers, probably tall mothers, seem to be kind of short, and they send them to you, and you do a big workup looking for growth hormone and things like that. Uh, who are really the candidates for this, and should I even consider things like growth hormone? Dr. Koplow, it's important to understand that most often children who are referred to the pediatric endocrinologist are normal children who have short genes or families that are short. In circumstances where children are profoundly short, and that is defined by the American Academy of Pediatrics as well as the Endocrine Society and the Lawson Wilkins Pediatric Endocrine Society as being at or below the second percentile, and your pediatrician or family care provider can certainly guide you as to whether or not your child is at, is at that level, that child would be considered to be short regardless of whether or not there's a family history of being that short. And the question of whether or not to treat a child like that is a discussion that needs to take place between the child's primary care provider, the child, the family, and the pediatric endocrinologist. This is certainly not a condition where one size fits all. The Food and Drug Administration of the United States, as well as all the professional bodies I mentioned earlier, have recognized that in some children, short stature can present a disability. And in those cases, it's important to recognize that even in the absence of growth hormone deficiency, those children are likely to benefit from growth-promoting therapy. In fact, over the last decade, the Food and Drug Administration of the United States has approved for use in children who are not growth hormone deficient in five separate conditions, the use of growth hormone to promote growth. Therefore, without making any overgeneralizations, children who are below or at the second percentile, who their height is troubling to them, and would like to proceed with growth promoting therapy, should be offered that therapy regardless of whether or not they in fact have growth hormone deficiency. Now, if growth hormone deficiency is established, it's important to recognize that growth hormone treatment is not all about making a child taller. That growth hormone has many important effects in the body and important for bone health, important for heart function, important for kidney function, important for cholesterol, and therefore, in a child who's been shown to be deficient, that treatment should be given and parents should be compelled to treat those children because of the many, many different effects that growth hormone has on the body. Furthermore, when linear growth is complete or when a child is done growing, it's quite possible that that child will require lifelong replacement of growth hormone because, as we know, growth hormone is produced lifelong by people and therefore, for all of the other reasons, in addition to growth, growth hormone should continue lifelong in those that are truly deficient in growth hormone. Thank you, Dr. Handel.